Hi guys, welcome to the first video of P4 radioactivity. Um, to start off with, we're just going over the basics of atoms, atomic structure, etc. Just to make sure you're okay, because these are the building blocks of literally the whole course. So, we're talking about atomic properties. In this video, we're going to look at the structure of an atom, the properties of subatomic particles, i.e. the particles that make up an atom, uh, calculate the number of subatomic particles in atoms, describe what an isotope is, and identify isotopes, and they're also going to look at what an ion is. So first off, this is an atom that you're familiar with. This is a really basic diagram of it. We're going to come later on to like the different models of the atom over time. But essentially, we've got a few different parts here. We have got this bit in the center. That whole block there is called a nucleus. A nucleus is made up of two types of subatomic particles, one of which is called a neutron and one of which is called a proton. Then orbiting this, you have electrons. In physics, we don't really care too much about the arrangement in GCSE. Obviously, it is important. Try and get into good practice. It normally goes 288 in chemistry in terms of how many electrons you have in each shell. So obviously, these things here are shells. Now, shells in simple terms are basically energy levels. You can have a certain number of electrons in each energy level and electrons, what they can do is if there's room in a shell, is they can make transitions, they can move up and down. We'll come to that later on. These different particles, they have different properties. So, first thing is charge. Charge of a proton, or relative charge, is plus one. Charge of an electron is minus one. Charge of a neutron, zero. I always remember, proton, positive neutron, neutral, and this is stupid, but electron is negative. I know it's stupid, but hey, it might work. Um, they also have mass. So if we talk about protons, we say that they have a relative mass. The reason why we call it relative is because it does actually have a mass, but it's just compared to the other particles. Protons have a relative mass of plus one. Neutrons have a relative mass of plus one. And electrons. Now, sometimes they'll tell you that the relative mass is zero because it's so small, but it's about one over 2,000. So a 2,000th of the mass of a proton or neutron. Now, another thing I forgot to say is about the nucleus itself. So the nucleus does actually have a charge because it's made of neutrons and protons. Now, you might not have to specifically say the exact charge, but you just need to know that a nucleus is positive. And the reason why it's positive is because it's made of protons, which are positive, and neutrons, which are neutral. So overall, it will be positive. Okay, now if we go into a bit more detail our charge, let's just say we've got all these particles here. So we've got five protons, four neutrons, seven electrons. If we try to work out the overall charge, we can do it like this. So five protons, well, you've got protons that have a charge of plus one. If you've got five of them, you're essentially going to have five plus one charges, i.e. the overall charge of that is going to be plus five. If you have got seven neutrons, uh, sorry, seven electrons, electrons have got a charge of minus one, therefore the overall charge will be minus seven, and you've got four neutrons, neutrons have no charge, therefore none. So you're looking at this, the overall charge is going to be plus 5, minus 7, plus 0, which is going to be minus 2. So what we're going to do is, if you want a quick go of these questions, have a quick go. Um, pause it and I'll then go for the answers. So, let's go for the answers. Uh, we've got two protons, plus 2, three neutrons, new. Two electrons, minus 2. Overall charge of that is 0. Seven protons, that's plus seven. Eight neutrons, zero. Five electrons, minus five. Plus seven, minus five, plus zero if you really want to. You get a charge of plus two. Now if we look at this, every single atom has always got the same number of protons as it has electrons. So for example, if you're looking at a carbon atom, carbon atoms have six protons. They also have six electrons. 
as we just said, the charge of a proton is plus one, so that will have a charge of plus six. Charge of electron, minus one, so six electrons, minus six. Neutrons, doesn't matter, neutral, who cares? The overall charge of every single atom is always zero, because they always have the same number of protons as they do electrons. The neutrons make no difference whatsoever. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how you calculate the number of subatomic particles in atoms. Again, something you've done in chemistry. In physics, you're not given a periodic table. What you are likely to be given is maybe like a snippet of one of these. In chemistry, you do get a periodic table. Very similar thing. So if we look, a bit of notation here. Um, we have got two numbers. We have got this one on the bottom, which is the atomic number. And this one here, which is the relative atomic mass. You might find in some periodic tables that the numbers are the wrong way round. The easiest way to remember this is that the mass is the massive number. So 12 is the more massive number here. That's the atomic mass. What we're going to look at, though, is what these numbers actually mean. So let's have a look at calcium. So this number here the atomic mass, that is essentially the number of protons. So if you had a calcium atom, you will have 20 protons. This number, this atomic number, defines the element. So if you have an atom with 20 protons in, that is always calcium. If you change the proton number, you change the element altogether. So that is the number of protons. As we just said, the number of protons is always equal to the number of electrons. So if you wanted to work out the number of electrons in a calcium atom, it's literally just 20, it's the same. The number of neutrons, a bit trickier. This number here. Now, we get to A-level physics, what they do is they call this thing the nucleon number, i.e. it's the total number of particles in a nucleus. Well, the particles we know in a nucleus are protons and neutrons. So what this is saying is, in this atom, you have 20 protons and you have 20, uh, 40 protons and neutrons. So what you can do is you can make it a bit of a sum if you like. The number of protons and neutrons equals 40. We know we've got 20 protons. So 20 plus number of neutrons is 40. If you want to work out the number of neutrons in an atom, you've got to do the relative atomic mass minus the atomic number. Now by coincidence, some of these do happen to be the same, i.e. in this one, the number of neutrons is the same as the number of protons. It won't always be the same just in some cases where you have a lower proton number. So if you want to have a quick go at that, you can do. Press pause. Here are your answers. Right, now we're going to look at isotopes. So what I've done here is I've got two carbon atoms. These two, they're isotopes. They have some similarities and some differences. So if we look at these, we can first off see the similarity is their atomic number. They have the same number of protons. As I said, the atomic number actually defines what element it is. They also have the same symbol. They are the same element. If they've got the same number of protons, they also have the same number of electrons. But the difference is their atomic mass. So if we were to look at each one of these, if we were to look at the number of protons, neutrons and electrons in each one. Protons in this one, 6. Neutrons in this one, 12 minus 6, 6. Electrons, 6. We are to look at this one. Number of protons, 6. Number of electrons, 6. The number of neutrons is the atomic mass minus the atomic number, 14 minus 6, which is Eight. So what we say is that these atoms are isotopes. Now, they are atoms, that's what they both are. They are of the same element. Both of these are carbon. They have the same number of protons. They have the same number of electrons. But they have a different number of neutrons. 
Because remember that neutrons do nothing. It doesn't affect the charge because neutrons don't have a charge. Now it's important we identify isotopes because isotopes are really common when we talk about things like radioactive decay. So if you look at these, I've got three elements here. What you've got to do is you've got to try and spot which one of these is not the isotope. So i.e. there are two here that are isotopes of each other, one is not. Pause, have a guess. Right, so remember, isotopes have the same number of protons, they have the same number of electrons, different number of neutrons. So immediately, look, they are atomic numbers, they're both exactly the same, they have a different atomic mass, therefore this oxygen here has 8 protons, this one has 8 protons, this one has 17 minus 8 neutrons, i.e. it has 9 neutrons, this one here has 8 neutrons, these are the isotopes. This one doesn't exist. Well, it might exist, but it's definitely not oxygen. As I said, you change the atomic mass, uh, so the atomic number, and you change the element. I don't know why Pac-Man's on there. Just ignore him. And finally, to finish this off, ions. So here is a carbon atom. As we said here, carbon atom has got atomic number of 6 and it's got an atomic mass of 12 that means the number of protons it's got 6 number of neutrons 12 minus 6 6 number of electrons 6 so what would happen if you suddenly got rid of one of these electrons well what happens now is these numbers change that's exactly the same that's exactly the same that now becomes 5 now earlier on we said that every single atom is neutral because it's got the same number of protons as neutrons. But here, I've got one more proton than an electron. So, if we look at this, we've got a charge of plus 6. We've got a charge of minus 5. Add up the total. Plus 6 minus 5 equals plus 1. Now what we've done is we've changed this atom into an ion. An ion, in simple terms, is a charged particle. The way you make a charged particle is you remove an electron. You could also add an electron as well. You could either work out what the charge is based on this, or the way you can think about it, if you're losing something negative, you're going to feel better. So an atom, if it loses something negative, it feels positive. So, just to recap, isotope, same number of protons, same number of electrons, different number of neutrons. An ion is a charged particle. And the way you do that is you remove an electron or add an electron. You can't just say for an ion, by the way, that you can add or remove a proton. That is very, very difficult because these here in the nucleus are bound very, very tightly. A very strong force, called the strong force, is acting between them. Good. Hope that's helped, guys. That's everything. Join you next time. Bye-bye.